Now, the strike is costing Air France about $25 million a day in revenue. I spoke with Seth Kaplan, managing partner of Airline Weekly, about the strike, and I asked him how the airline plans to save money when it's actually costing it so much. Yeah, it's a real mess, Phil. You know, Air France has financial problems. This is a company that not too many years ago did merge with KLM, was doing rather well, and now is quite frankly, not doing well. The low-cost carriers in particular, companies like Ryanair and EasyJet, really eating Air France's lunch, taking ever more of its corporate traffic on short-haul routes. And Air France wants to fight back, so it's trying to restructure its short-haul operations into something of a lower-cost nature, but its unions don't like that idea at all. Now, hold on, because last I checked, airlines were doing really well over the last few years. Uh, profits are on the rise. It's been, what, four, four and a half pretty good years for the airline industry that really had no traction for who, who, get, who knows how long. Isn't it time that some would say that these unions have given and given and given? When do they get something? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, sometimes the realities of the world uh, just just make life unfair. And, and certainly you can understand from the perspective of somebody who's given and given that they don't want to give any more. But sometimes as much as they've given, it's still not enough to put some companies on firm footing. And when you have a, you know, an ultra low cost carrier like Ryanair just really nipping at your heels, uh, you know, for everything that Air France's unions have given, it, it's, it's not enough. And, and they, they need to find a way to fix this. And uh, quite frankly, it's either lower your costs or raise your revenues. And on short haul routes in particular, which are so exposed to these low cost competitors, not much you can do it on the revenue side, so they're trying to do it on the cost side, and it is painful for the workers, no question. The latest uh, numbers we have is that airfares are higher, profits are higher for airlines, but is the experience for the consumer any better? Your thoughts? You know, in some ways it is, Phil. In some ways you get what you pay for. If you look, for example, at a place like the U.S., which is really the, the poster child for a revived airline industry, airlines that are making a lot of money in a place where, where they historically struggled. You know, so on one hand, people are paying more, no question. They're, they're getting uh, nickel and dimed, as they call it, uh, you know, being asked to pay for all these extras. But airlines are not only safer than they've ever been, but also more reliable. And if you look at an airline, let's say like Delta, which is really the one that, that is at the top of the industry, earning nearly $3 billion last year, Delta, with all that money, along with giving a lot of it back to its shareholders, has reinvested in things like reliability. It's running a, an extraordinarily on-time operation. It's not losing very many bags. Those are the kinds of things that you can do when you're making money. So people are paying more, but at least in some regards, they're getting more for it. So that said, in, in cases like this where you book a flight on Air France and it's been canceled, for example, whether you're going to Asia or you're going to, to America, do consumers remember this? Is it going to have a long-term impact on, on the company, these sort of work stoppages or work threats? They remember it for a period of time. So, so of course, while the strike is going on, it's absolutely devastating for the airline. And, and also you get some of what airlines call bookaways. People who, you know, you're, they're seeing this in the headlines and they think, well, that's not an airline that I want to fly. But by several months later, typically they're back to choosing based on the same things that they always choose, price and schedule, in that order for leisure travelers and for corporate travelers, sometimes the other way around. What's the most convenient schedule? And it doesn't work within the budget. So a short-term impact is very devastating, but in the medium to long term, not that important. The, the bigger issue for Air France is that it has to resolve these issues. And by the way, there's no guarantee that even if it wants, if it gets what it wants from the unions, that this is going to work. What it's trying to do and what is upsetting the unions is, is create this low-cost airline within an airline. And that's a strategy that, that hasn't had a very good track record around the world. So, so there's a chance, by the way, that the unions, the workers, are actually saving the airline from itself with a risky strategy.